All right, right. we are live. Right. Hello, hello. <clears throat> Thank you, Jack. Hello, Anne Marie. So How good to you? see you again. Doing well. I'm happy to be here. I, I screwed up today, but that happens. I did too. Did today you? was tough. Yes. I saw, I knew that if we got over the close of yesterday, that we'd get into a squeeze formation and that squeeze could be strong. And I still tried to short in front of it. By golly, I was so mad at myself today. Oh, I was mad. Sounds like we had the same day. There were yep, you know, a couple of nuances that, that, that I think had us lead that way, but you know, our, our, our tip of the week is, is adaptability and I failed to adapt. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting. We, at the end of the day, we can do all the analysis in the world, but at, at the point of execution, we have to make a decision and that decision by the time we make it, we're usually so committed that it takes a long time for us to go, hang on, that's probably the wrong decision here today. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's happened like to me. A, it's like having a strategy that works for weeks and then it doesn't. And you keep trying to trade it and you just keep getting whacked and getting whacked. And you're like, well, that's not working anymore. What? I got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> I am very so, excited to go over um, the special decisions and um, breaking things out. So, uh, and I, I think today is going to be a, a, a good day to show that up. It certainly is because... Have we done the late spike yet? No, that's what we were going to do. And then um, you said, "Hey, let's let's do this. Uh, let's do this one instead." Do you do you want to do the late spike quickly and then move to the next, or what's your thought? Well, we we actually ended up having a, a late spike yesterday, and it's part of the reason that I got a, a, a downside bias that I failed to adapt to, which brought us to the value area acceptance or special situation play that played out perfectly. So the, the So why do we the why do we call it why do we call it a special situations play? What is well, the special situation? The, the special situation play is something that comes right out of Jim Dalton's book, uh, Mind Over Markets. You know, there are, there were specific situations based off of, off of the profile. There were indications of acceptance of price outside of previous range and acceptance of price back inside previous value or, or balance. Now, the two main ones that, that I learned, not only from Mr. Dalton, but from friends of mine in the pit, were the late spike and the value area special situation play. I, I think D calls it the value area acceptance play. So, the... We actually ended up having both today. Excellent. Now, the one, the one thing about, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to put up the TPO charts. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with TPO charts, I'm going to split these so that they are more like a 30 minute chart, right? So, Yesterday we opened and we set the range and we came all the way to the low of the range, which was basically weekly kickoff low 4730. 
it wasn't until right at the end of the day until before we started extending the range yeah. and rather <laughs> substantially mm -hmm. closed. We closed down there. The settlement price, to be precise, was 47.29.50. So right here is where the market closed, and that's where settlement was. So what that means is the market left value and then closed before it had the opportunity over time to show acceptance of lower pricing. And so once again, because the words give me trouble sometimes, acceptance comes from continued uh, auctioning at these prices. Correct, correct. So okay. if I were to unsplit these profiles, let's go unsplit. So value, the value area is basically from here to here. That's where 70% of the time in price was spent there. That is value. On Here's the volume value. On TPO, correct. Yes. This is gotcha. the volume profile, vol volume value, relatively close to TPO value, right? Uh -huh. So we're in range here. We're in balance. We're in value here. Right at the end of the day, we left value in search of new business, in search of uh -huh. It's a trade facilitation, which is the market's job, right? The market's job is to facilitate trade. It's to find the level that buyers and sellers are comfortable conducting business. The market didn't didn't give us give us enough time by the close yesterday to show if it was going to accept or reject as a failed auction. So the next day we opened in the late spike. Now there's three different things that that can mean. Well, if we open below the late spike, outright below the late spike and create a gap, that's the highest probability of acceptance of lower pricing. Right, so the gap down would yeah. continue lower. Correct. If that, okay. Right, with probability, you know, nothing yes. is for sure. Yes, right? yes, of course, of right? course. Right, Yeah. so. If we open in the late spike, it's still a possibility of acceptance of lower pricing, but a but a lower probability than opening outright below it. So today we opened in the late spike, which had me thinking, all right, well, I mean, the probabilities are we were might we might accept lower pricing, we might turn lower. So the opening range didn't work. The base of the late spike didn't work. Usually the base of the late spike, if the market is going to accept lower pricing, would indicate a good opportunity for a short. Well, I took the short. Opening range didn't work. The short didn't work. Okay. Uh, what now? Well, the market went inside of the, the value area and then went back outside of it. I looked at that as a rejection of value from yesterday right? Here's what it looks like uh -huh, if I split uh -huh. the profiles. So here's that, here's that, that first 30 minutes traded uh -huh. inside value and then left. Right. So that says, all right, well, maybe we're going to reject value. There's another opportunity uh -huh. for a short. We opened uh -huh. and in the next 30 minutes, we finished the value area special situation play. Okay, say that sentence one more time. The la the very last sen sentence of the conclusion of, or just say what you said again. My, I just okay. went zone. My brain just <laughs> went sideways. I was like, oh my gosh, I have a trade on. And then I'm with you. <laughs> totally. All right, so say it one more time. I'm with you. We come. Okay. So. The first 30 minutes went inside value from the previous right. session, but it left. It went, it, it, right. it, it seemed to be rejecting value. Now, this may have been a little bit of pre preemptive of a, of a short, but because we opened in the, the, the late spike, right. 
I still believed it to be a valid opportunity. So, but in the very next 30 minute bar, guess what happens? The market races through the value area from yesterday and then some, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. now the thing about the value area special situation play is you're looking for acceptance before the market really starts to accelerate to the other extreme. Right. Now, okay. First learning this, we would be looking for two 30-minute bars to close back inside the previous day's area of value before really kind of saying, okay, it's accepting value. And the, the, the basic rule of it says at some point during this session, price will return and visit the other extreme of value, which is up here and, and up here. But it happened real fast today. Okay, so let me ask this question. When we talk about these 30 minute uh, bars that uh, say, hey, I'm going to accept value and come back into this area, we mm -hmm. really are looking for price participation that doesn't dip lower. Essentially, that's what I'm seeing in the TPO. <laughs> it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it's. I mean, to choke you up there. I mean, if it were if it were that simple, Anne Marie, you, we could nail this every time. Unfortunately, oh. the so let's... the the perception of acceptance in previous value is extremely subjective. It's what makes yeah. it a tough tough trade to take. Okay, so. If we're trying to dissect, we saw the first, we saw the observations that said, hey, listen, we could have more downside. And then we enter the trade, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't turn out that way. It, right. it reverses that that happens right i mean we can study all we want we can look mm -hmm. at observations you know if you're here in florida you can look outside and go oh it's perfectly sunny and if you leave for 15 minutes and come back you're gonna have you know sideways rain it just it just happens so right right um i i do understand that the question is let's say we put that trade on how do we say to ourselves, all right, that's my trade. Where's my stop? Where's my target? Let's well, just the manage value. the risk from that perspective. Yeah. Okay. And that's what makes this so difficult. Like I kind of, like I mentioned, learning this from others before actually learning it in the in the book the the general rule was we wanted two 30 minute bars to close back inside previous day's value the problem with that is you'll get one that may close in there it can come back outside of value and then come back inside value and then put another close of a 30 minute bar in there and then come back outside value and then finally come inside value and then finish it. The rule is at some point during that session, price is likely to revisit the other extreme of the previous day's value. So what happened today was we, by the time we had even one 30 minute bar close inside value, the play was pretty uh -huh. much over over we were yep. more than two, we were two yep. thirds of the way there yep 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 i see that right. so speed so here is here's my thought i was sitting down after the smoke left my ears because i have terrible temper with myself when i see what i need to do but i don't and so a lot of times i have to have the hey now settle down if this was another random person you wouldn't be thinking like that you'd be talking uh -huh. them through it so i sat down this morning and i said all right 
what did you miss? One, my cognitive bias was very skewed to, hey, listen, I'm going to have more downside pressure. But also, I failed to set that special incidence that says, hey, people have been short for days and days. Mm -hmm. If this turns around, they're going to be running for the fire escapes. Right. And whenever that happens, things always move further and faster than you realize. And so yes. my, my thought was, you know, you've got on those days where news comes out and you can see prior days of building negative pressure you have to expect that things are going to run farther and faster than you anticipate. So it's better to put the trades that you're looking for at these wider levels rather than, oh, well, this makes sense because this will be an orderly move down, which is what I did today. I said to myself, well, this makes sense. This is what's going to happen. And of course, when does the market ever make sense for more than a second? Never. Right. So uh, I assumed and didn't look at proper price action and it really hurt me today. And so in this <clears throat> special situations play or this uh, late spike that comes in the prior mm -hmm. day and moves mm -hmm. Should we have this little toggle that says, you know, um, if you've got news coming, you better think about this being much faster than you might normally think and then put it in a special pile? Or what is your thought about helping the trader doing that? It makes complete sense in Marie. And I, I was thinking about, you know, not that I've had a lot of time today, but in just reviewing what I missed. Okay. We've been, we've been coming off the highs with not tremendous volume. We've uh -huh. been adding uh -huh. open interest on the way down, but between uh -huh. weekly kickoff high and weekly kickoff low, I kind of view that as, shorter time frame weaker hands speculators uh -huh, some of them you uh -huh. know some of them swing traders probably providing most of that additional open interest on the way down the late spike below the weekly kickoff low yesterday i'm thinking oh boy oh boy we're gonna bring in new business to the short <clears throat> yeah. side below that level yeah, i was looking for that and, liquidation too and, and one thing that you put in the the, the chat yesterday as this was going on before it really kind of picked up the volume at the low you were like yeah but it's low volume and i'm like i thought about that after the, today and i'm like you know i mean it, initially it was low volume it did stack some up it was decent volume for the 30 minute bar but overall the volume wasn't all that tremendous from yesterday. It was, what, 3.7 billion shares uh -huh, on the New York uh -huh, Stock Exchange. Uh -huh. That doesn't indicate a big change in, in positioning or direction. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. in, in you know, in kind I of looking back at thing. what looking <clears throat> back at what we did today, I'm thinking, all right, what are the things I missed? And and that's that's a big part of them. Yeah, you know, it's funny, this game that we play, and some people get offended, you call it a game, you know, it, it I love it. So I'm always going to call it a game, because it's fun. <laughs> even when, sure. even when I have a day like today, that gives me information, but my ability to say, pump the brakes, you've got a bias that's coloring this, Mm -hmm. it just fades and so the the fact of the matter is it happens it's going to happen again and so the question is uh what do i do about it and i am i am usually like you in the sense that i go you know 
three strikes, you're out. That's all you get at the plate. If it's three trades and you still are not getting a winning trade, you are not looking at the market properly. I know this. And today, I must have made eight trades. And they were just, I just kept thinking, nope, this is going to be it. Nope, this is going to be it. And I just was not looking at it clearly. And again, it came down to that cognitive bias and being willing to go, wait a second, if I'm wrong, thinking about this, then the next thing that should happen is X. And I did not wait for it. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. kept going, yep, X is going to happen. I'm in. And you that and impatience, I the impatience got the best of me. Yep. Mm -hmm. It just I, did. I, 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 I did sell it a, like a point off the high, but it was so contrary to the trend of the day. It was hard I to hold. Took a little bit on it. I, I only know. took a little bit. Same on it. thing. Same thing. The cumulative lizard brain. <laughs> I, I, All of us have it we on our face. Just talking about the lizard brain, and even after. Even after this many years and as many years as you've been trading, it's still yeah. there. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, you know, it is. It's going to be we're, every we're. every single day. So sorry about that uh, digression right there, just venting a little. And it's great to be able to, you know, vent and go, you know, that's what you did. That's why it's great to talk to people about your trades. It's why, you know, that's why trading buddy on the discord works where you get in there, mm -hmm. but you have to be willing to go, Hey, you know what? I, I messed up right here. I should have, I was going to say something that was not very, uh, <laughs> you know, I have, there's a, I have whole military family on my background, right? Navy, Marine Corps, and the, okay. the euphemisms are sometimes um, yes. <laughs> not for right. prime time. So I was thinking, of, right. like, you know, you, you really, when, when you mess up, you have to be open and say, you know what? I did this wrong and be comfortable at looking at the fact that you made a mistake and then being vocal about it because you're going to break down your ego yesterday or the day before you were talking about great books. And I got to tell you, the ego is the enemy by Ryan holiday is one of the best books that I've ever read. The ego is the enemy. It's very, very good. And you know, he's, he's a stoic and I don't, I don't prescribe to stoicism per se, but I do, uh -huh believe that laying the ego aside and being transparent and going, you know what? Um, I did that really badly. I, I could have done X, Y, or Z and come out a lot better. But I think a lot of times we expect people to be perfect when they're doing stuff like this. And we're there, you know, if we spend the time watching them on YouTube, Sometimes we want them to be perfect so we can go, oh, all right, that's how you do it. Right. But the fact of the matter is, it is every single day is a learning experience for the trader. And if you don't take the time to learn the experience, you're wasting your education. It's going to take you much, much longer to get your training wheels off and get your groove in. And so, you know, if we take a look at this and we... Like you said, hey, if we had tried to wait for this to complete and take the ordinary rules out of this um, special situation play, right. it would have been very hard to mechanize. And that, would we say that that's because of the speed of the market? So maybe we say, hey, listen, special situation plays, we don't want to take them, um, on the or the late spike we don't want to take them when news has just come out and the market is reacting in some way or some other way or do we say hey if the market's reacting and you look and you see special situation plays or you see the late day spike 
you have to realize that that might be a scalp trade and you want to get out very quickly. What, what do we, how do you think we ought to color this when I put it up in the strategy lab on the discord room? Okay. Um, I so, know that's hard. I'm sorry. Uh, when the market opens outside of the previous day's range, for a for a, a late spike trade, I find that there's a better probability of them actually working. Today okay, we opened irrespective. in late spike. Oh. So was it the reversal of the because we started the day way below that. Before the news came out, it spiked down yes. and then it moved back in and then yes. and then we opened. So when we look at something like that, it puts us in the framework of the trade and you think, hey, normally this works, irrespective of whether it's um, news generated or not. Is that what you're saying? Or did I miss the bubble? I'm well, out of bubble without a Jesus. No, I don't, no, I don't think so. When we when we look at the overnight activity from last night, the market never never even traded back above the base of the late I spike. I know, it's, right? It was heavy. Yep. So you know when when that happened, I'm like, okay, now the number cake comes out. There's a knee jerk. Yeah. Uh, and then the market comes up and and opens back inside the the late spike, which still is you know a possible indication of acceptance of lower pricing. I, right. you know, I think my biggest mistake was recognize was not recognizing that the weekly kickoff forty seven thirty seven, which is basically the yes. base of the late spike, didn't hold. Yes, didn't hold. But I'm thinking, eh, eh let's see if it uh, tests yeah, into yeah. value, and then oh, it's moving too fast. It's gonna roll over. Yeah, right. I get right. So yeah. I'm looking for kind of an example of of you know a, a, a like a breakaway opening range trade after where would the stop late... have been where would the stop have been if we had you know if we had taken this and said hey you know this is late day spike and we're oh we would have to wait anyway wouldn't we if this is a late day spike and we opened up inside of the prior right. days spike we would have to wait Right. So With initially the oh, opening range okay. trade broke to the downside, got me short, but it only traded one tick below it. Then it took gotcha. me out on top. So, okay, the opening range yeah. trade didn't work. Let's, let's try the base of the late spike and, and, uh, uh, the weekly kickoff low. Well, that didn't work. All right. It rejected initially inside value. Here's value low right mm -hmm. here. It yeah. rejected initially. But when the when the bar opened and couldn't take couldn't look below weekly kickoff low and the base of the late spike, I should have said I'm crazy trying to get short. And it's so you know, you know it. It's so easy in hindsight to look at that. Exactly. But with that bias in my head, yeah. I'm like, yeah. all right, well, yeah, you know. And that was three yeah. strikes, so I didn't do anything until I took that short way up here, and only took awesome. a little bit of it because you know this is what we're looking at at that point. Big yeah. greens, you know, it looks like it's going to go to the moon, but no. Yeah. You know, it's super interesting. Another uh, cognitive event. There is a fantastic uh, neuroscience researcher by the name of David Eagleman. And he's at Rice University. He does a bunch of stuff, David Eagleman. But he talks about where it is when your brain goes hey where are my keys you ever look for something and you go where is that where are they and you turn back around and they're sitting right in front of you yeah, or even in Have your you hand. Ever had that happen yeah oh yeah <laughs> the fridge or the freezer is where i'll find my keys normally yeah. so where's the where's but my pen where I is that you look pen. and and then there it is it'll be sitting right in front of you he says that our brains fill in what's actually not what's actually there but what we think ought to be there 
And so when we take a snapshot and we close our eyes and I go, hey, what do you tell me what you think is in the top left hand of this picture that you just saw, your brain is going to fill in the blanks. It's not going to leave it blank. And days right. like today is what happens to us. Our brain fills in the suppositions before we can go, hold on, I need to reevaluate based on new information. And so okay. although this might sound like a broken record to some people, it really is something where you go, hey, if you take the first trade and it doesn't work out, you have to step back and go, if my original premise is wrong, what should the next candle do? And then wait. So important because for me, I believe, hey, if you take a trade and it doesn't work out, that doesn't mean that the trade's bad. It just means that your right. timing is off. Right. And so you have to discern, wait, is my timing actually off or am I wrong about what this trade might actually do? And that is self-control. That is does, impulse control. Does, and I just uh, didn't have it today. Does David Eagleman talk in that book about the brain's ability to discount information that it disagrees with? Oh, all the time. He's got actually a YouTube channel. Um, I think he did. He's done a bunch of stuff for like National Geographic. And I mean, he's he's a really um, he's been around for a while. Um, I just noticed his hair starting to go gray, but so, but he's, huh. he's been around for a bit, but he's a, he's very, he's excellent at clarity of what you're seeing so that you can understand how your brain processes information and it fills in the blanks all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. You cannot trust your mind to go yeah and some people have eidetic memories as some people call that um what's the word people use photographic photographic right? yeah it's really eidetic is what the real word is and some people have those but they're like three percent three percent maybe uh, the rest of us fill in the blanks we just see sort of you know it's sort of like um remember that thing they did and they said follow the guy uh follow the ball and they had like 10 they had two teams on a basketball court and they the goal of the person watching it was to count how many times the ball was passed and a gorilla walked straight through the um the court the basketball the court, court and 60 percent of the people never saw him wow yeah let's wow. see if i can find that yeah it's 60 percent of the people never ever saw it because they were focused on counting how many times the ball got passed and a big guy in a gorilla suit walked straight through and nobody ever saw him that's amazing because a gorilla walked right across my charts today and i didn't even see it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> A guy carrying um, a chainsaw and, walked across my charts today. <laughs> Ego is the enemy. Is that what's the name of that author again? Uh, Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday. Yes, I so, think he spells like it with a, two L's. Okay, sounds like a like a a, a beach band leader. Hi, I'm Ryan Holiday. I know it's a strange name. He said he takes himself no, no, very no, it's seriously. A good name. No, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's a very serious, yeah. serious book. It it is a serious book, um, but it's really I loved it. I loved every single minute of it because I'm all about the learning and getting from you know step one to step two uh, as as far as um, just getting better as an individual. So I I do. I, I enjoyed it very much. He's got like four or five of them, but ego is the enemy is, is my favorite is my favorite. Do you have any so, um, New Year's ahead. resolutions? Oh, I don't do those. 
I have new day resolutions. If I say to myself, oh, you're not doing that anymore. I will not wait to go, hey, you know, you'll start in the new year. I go, you're starting right now, right? right? Now. It's sort of like, so I was, let me tell you this. I was a chain smoker for uh, really? I don't know how many years. Oh, I know. It's terrible. Like I said, you know, I'd be dead in the ditch if it wasn't for Jesus. I'm still, I'm still so, fighting it. So. Yeah. So yeah, I, let me tell you what years. I was doing. So I started smoking in high school. Uh, it was cool kids were doing it, you know. And so I started smoking in high school and smoked all the way through we high school college. Together. <laughs> <laughs> and I started saying, you know what, I'm going to get really fit. And I started um, doing some bodybuilding work and just, I, I just got way into full extra, just six hours a day. Terrible. Just, I'm all, literally, I'm an obsessive compulsive character. I'm all in or all out. It's never halfway for me. And so mm -hmm. I said, all right, I'm going to do it. And I would still be smoking in the evenings and throwing up blood when I'm running. You know, I do five miles a day and then go to the gym. I'm still, you know, I'm puking up blood. And then one day oh. I went, what are you doing? You're smoking and then you're doing all this other stuff with your body. You're going to quit smoking. And I quit cold turkey, never smoked again. And mm. so the way that I did it was just by substitution. I was like, oh man, I, I really want to smoke. I'm going to chew some gum or I'm going to go work out or I'm going to go whatever. And so, you know, it was, I just said, I'm done, but I got to tell you this. I, whenever I walk by a good cigarette, I still take an extra breath because i feel that urge of whatever on the flip side if it is an oral fixation chew gum but you could always try zin you know right. have you tried zin z white <laughs> Yeah, my my kids are crazy about that stuff. But you know, chew chew gum. It's it is a it's an oral fixation event, right. and you know, whatever. I chewed my All fingernails right. for years when when doing it. So we have a few questions for you. Sure, Let's have you ready? Yeah. All right. Um, what time frames do you mark your supply and demand zones? And do you use time-based charts only or range and tick charts as well? So I have to say that today when I was out of my element and, you know, a little back footed on all my trades, I'll slip to, Hey, let me look at the 5,000 tick or let me look, but I look at daily, weekly and monthly charts to find my levels of support open close high low and heavy congestion and those are the only things i look at so in terms of price action and so mm -hmm. if a chart is in between those levels then i will say okay i'm moving between so i either need to wait for the bottom or wait for the top and not do anything in between that and so like last night i saw that the NQ was coming down into that 16,330 level. I said, oh my gosh, that's the next level. It was like 2021 close or something like that. Can't remember. But mm. I thought that's going to be the next place the buyers are going to show up. So literally, that's what I do. I'll go yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily. And I'll draw the lines and I'll go all right, I'm just going to see how they behave at those levels. If they behave well, I'm in. If they behave badly, I'm going to wait until they've told me what they're going to do. Okay, so I've heard you mention 
like highs and lows from past years and months and stuff like that yeah. before are you using um of course continuation charts are you are you using the um the uh adjusted for continuation or the not back adjusted um i use the continuous chart mm. so you know from think or swim so those are the okay. levels that i use and i i use them because i suspect that that's what most people are using and we sure. we know when they try to you know they try to shake out those weak hands they move through those levels so i'll just look right. i'll let it fail and then i'll watch for it to hold sometimes it moves up like a rocket in a v-shape and other times right. it'll jiggle around there and as soon as those one minute charts i know you said people who trade the nq on one minute are insane but I, I do because I want to see it. I want to see him catch the bid super fast so that I can go, wait, they're all making higher lows there. I'm going to get in. Okay. Uh, one kind of additional question from me on that. If let's say you're in the, the, the March S and P contract and you have, uh -huh recent information within the, the last few months, and then maybe you have information from two years ago. Do you look at both or do you focus on the most recent? I focus on the most recent until it fails. And if it fails, I look backwards. I'm always looking further to the left. So I'll take the most recent and go, is this um, the most recent quarterly low right if it's the most recent daily low it doesn't have as much impact right, right. so i'm looking yeah, i'm gonna the, look at that week. Time, i'm gonna look yes exactly so that's what i'll do okay um uh... i i like this very much i gotta say it love me some Anne Marie. she's a beast you know i love uh, being a beast uh, i love being a savage if somebody says, oh my gosh, she's such a savage, I feel that that's like a badge I want to wear around everywhere. Because you yeah, do you have go, to right? have a level of fierceness. You have to have a level of fierceness to get back in there when the market kicks you around a little bit. Absolutely. You've got to be a, well, dad always used to say, uh, the hardest steel comes from the hottest forge. Yeah, you gotta have absolutely. thick skin. You gotta be a. You gotta be tough. You gotta be a beast to do this, right? Yep, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. If you're um, a thin skinned, it's it's a tough road. Uh yeah. We all, I think, have a have a very big tendency to uh, beat ourselves up and that's that that's not going to be good uh can you can i ask you another question here Anne marie of course uh, which time of frame course. uh an item like es and qcl gold do you recommend for traders with one to two years of experience this uh this uh tracy is trading their first trading combine and new to futures two years trading oh lovely um i would start with the micro es the mes um mm -hmm. or the the micro nq uh, the micro nq will give you some more juice as it moves up but really what you want to get before you get the dollars you want to get the rhythm and by that i mean this trading has a rhythm um you have to feel a flow of okay i understand where the market is likely headed. And the way to do that without fear, like in coaching today, someone was saying, hey, listen, you know, I got a lot of, I do really well with SIM and then, you know, I have a terrible time doing other things right. in the practice mm -hmm. or, or whatever. And so you, you talked about fear and in the beginning, you just have to know how to use the buttons. Can you do buy? Can you do a sell? Can you set a stop? Can you set a target? Can you look at a chart and go, oh, 
it looks like the traders want to go here. That's how you want to look at any kind of thing that you're doing. And so if you're saying to yourself, well, how do I know what I think they're going to do? The easiest thing in the world to do is look at a moving average, right? And the big moving average I like to look at is the VWAP. It's a volume weighted average price. It tells you regardless of what time frame you're looking at, it tells you whether many of the traders are long or short. So right now the VWAP's about flat. So we know that everybody's a little bit long and a little bit short and likely nobody's making mm -hmm. any money, right? right. And so yeah. that's, that's what I would do. Get into the rhythm of, can you do a buy? Can you do a sell? So that the fear of execution, just the rhythm of go, stop, go, stop, you've got, and then you can go, hmm, all right, if I take this trade from here to here, can I hold an MES, a micro, into my target? And if it doesn't come into my target, can I write down and go, hmm, that didn't come to my target. Did I estimate the wrong target? Or is it going to come to that target later? And so it's, you know, it's just, I don't know, I love to cook, but I love making my own recipes of things. And sometimes when you fix something, you're like, well, no, okay, that did not rise well enough, that I did not beat right. the eggs hard enough, I did, you know, because you're experimenting and a lot of trading comes with experimentation. Jim, Jim Dalton did not just come in and go, oh, that's how the volume profile works. It's just right, right. ahead. No, I'm right. Throw it out. It took, it years took a long and time. years. Exactly. And a mm -hmm. lot of that is going to be experimentation. Well, you know, this looks like this. And so let's see if this happens next. This is what I estimate. Oh, it doesn't. So what I need to do is if I do that, I need to estimate my risk. And really, if you're doing that, don't fret about, I got to see money right now. Get the rhythm right. It's like learning to ride a unicycle or learning to ski, right? You're going to take a bunny slope. You're not going to go, yeah, um, I'm going to go down this black diamond. I just put these skis on three days ago with a 15 line. Right? I mean, it's going to be hair. Yeah. It's going to be hair, teeth and eyeballs. So what you want to do is go slow, get the rhythm, learn to execute properly time after time, and then always write to keep your head in the space. Right. And literally journaling isn't, Oh, you know, the dear, I loved D's dear diary thing. It was so hilarious, but <laughs> it's not the dear diary thing. It's, um, long X, Y, Z target X, Y, Z didn't go reason, blah, 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 right. blah, blah. And learn to slow it down and go, all right, this is what you're not doing. But most of us are like the kid or the teenager that's looking in the window at an awesome party and you're outside and you're like, I got to get in there. I got to do it. I'm going. Right. It doesn't even right. matter if the cops are coming around the corner. It's, it's just, you just feel I've got to be in a trade. And uh, I have to tell you, impulse control is one of the most difficult things that we have to address as an individual and then cycle back into hold on do i move too much too fast simply because that's what i think i'm supposed to do sure sure and one thing that i, that I might add to that would be you know tracy don't overcomplicate things you know, I, I like Anne Marie's idea about you know focusing on on simple moving averages, moving averages, VWAP. Learn how the market moves around those things, uh, and, and take your time. You put too many things, too many time frames, too many indicators, too much of that stuff on your on your charts. It it's just gonna to, to go to confuse you. And you know, like Anne Marie said, just take your time. Take your time. There's no rush. 
Markets are going to be here for a long time. Definitely. All right. Absolutely. Uh, um, there, there are a couple of questions about <laughs> like TPO charts and stuff. I mean that those would uh, those would probably be more towards me. Um, and uh, all right. Um, Bad tuna salad is asking, would you consider this concept of acceptance to be subjective? And Marie, I'm, I, you know, acceptance is not necessarily something that you're kind of looking at. I mean, you could call acceptance congestion. And is it subjective? Yes. I don't think so. Um, now, how many candlesticks, if you're looking at it, and you're seeing a bunch of 30 second candlesticks all together, you can go, right. well, that's relative congestion to a 30 minute chart. But if you're seeing two months of candlesticks in a range, everybody's going to look at that and go, okay, that's heavy congestion. Oh, that's congestion. And so, right, that's exactly. exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think there's, I don't think it's subjective, but I do think it's relative not splitting frog hairs there between those words, but um, uh, relative means that other things come into play and subjective means an individual opinion. And so uh, I believe that congestion is relative to whatever else is going on in the chart. Okay. Um... I, there's a, a couple of questions which, here that I, I'm what? not really quite. Go yes, ahead. Go ahead. Uh, there are a couple of questions I'm not saying, quite sure how to read, or but go ahead. I was going to say, you know, a lot of people talking about the markets pulling back. All we're doing is moving one standard deviation away from the VWAP. That's all that's happening right now, and we're running into. Um, the low that we had at 1030, right? Now we're, we're right. trying to break it. And my thought is because we are in a profit taking space right now, and because this morning's run up was fueled by a short squeeze, we're going to give all of this back. And that's, that's, I mean, that that's my theory, which is, it's working out at the end of the day. I was just impatient at the beginning of the day, and it cost me right a poo time. Right. And you know, saying that kind of reminds me that because the market opens inside the late spike or below, it doesn't mean it has to go directly lower. Exactly. Exactly. So what I'd love to do next week is really pick this up again and uh -huh. sort of parse it out in terms of if it's why why we want to learn this where we want to put mm -hmm. our little light bulb that goes ooh this just happened and mm -hmm. how we can put it in our toolbox it's not a a primary trading event but it's a significant event within the volume profile arena. Would we, would right. we agree on that? Yes. So I think yeah. it's worth another yeah. one where we just sort of dig a little bit deeper and say, you know what, let's, let's define this in a space where we go, all right, if somebody mm -hmm. wants to memorize it, this is what needs to happen. Okay, um, there's, a, there's a question here, and I, I was kind of wondering if everybody got this. When you said, what do you mean give it all back? Do you mean more downside in the S&P? Yes. NASDAQ? Yes. More downside. Yeah, I do. I, I, I believe, yeah, I believe that we are on a rotation, and until the traders stop buying the dip, we're going to have them – spike it up and then run it back down we're, and then, we and then are run it back recalibrating down. yeah we're recalibrating you got it fat shrimp you got it fat shrimp all right yeah lots of folks thinking let's take out the overnight lows and you know that's 
that's what I was looking for earlier. And um, I've taken myself um, out of the game so far today. So I'm, I'm going to just watch and learn and uh, see what see what happens, right? I, we Even if we're not participating, there is a lot to learn. I think we, you know, I think sure. I know I talking to Anne Marie today got to think a lot of things through that I missed today. Um, I love the idea of the ego is the enemy. I love that book. And you were going to check out uh, David Eagleman too. And uh, one of my one of my decisions to try and improve myself this year was to to read more books. So and I've you know I've read You'll enjoy most that of the trading one. books I have a couple of times. <laughs> And uh, going to be looking at some some new stuff. So thank you very much for that, Anne Marie. And uh, for those of very you who welcome. don't know Anne Marie, I saw a couple of people asking. Do you want to talk a little bit about yourself? And I'll show them the book. Um, okay, so I've been trading about two decades, and uh, I've written a couple of books. And I trade to eat. <laughs> um, and uh you know i've i've just been around a long time i used to coach but i'm i'm finished and now i just want to be part of this great team that's just constantly sharing information with new traders and developing traders to uh open up a layer of transparency and having us lock arms together and go you know what uh, let's just forge forward and um, make good habits and repeat them over and over again. So, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Anne Marie uh, Trades. Um, I have a number of imposters. So, if all of a sudden you see a DM from me, it's probably not me because I'm a bit of an introvert and I rarely DM anyone, even my family. <laughs> 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 well, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> uh, there uh, you go. There you go. Uh, well, uh, for the, all of those that are sending in Marie your, your love and uh, and uh, no, noticing that she's a beast, I have tremendous respect and love for Anne Marie myself. So, Anne Marie, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it's always a pleasure looking forward to, uh, you know, seeing you, uh, have a nice weekend and coming back next week and having more time with you. So blessings to Absolutely. you, uh, blessings to you and Thank your family you. and uh, have, have a great weekend and we'll see you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around for the power hour coming up here in just a few minutes. See you later. All Anne right. Marie. Thank you. Stick around folks. Thanks.